Hi, my name is Jenna Hive, and I'm here today to tell you about a story, um, an experience that I had with horses recently. Yeah, um, I'm in Canada at the moment, and I'm with a very close friend of mine, um, Jeannie Patel Thompson, who has this incredible space in BC, um, this land um, for her horses. I was introduced to her horses last year and I'm very new to hanging out with horses. I haven't really done that before. I knew a lot about horses being used in therapy. Always kind of curious about it, but I'd never experienced it firsthand. And Jeannie has this incredible ability to communicate with horses in a way that I've just never seen before. And she's rescued these wild horses from slaughterhouses and other situations. And she taught me that you can train a horse, but you'll never have its heart if you do it in a way like tr that's traditionally known. And so she taught me that there's a way you can communicate with animals tele telepathically, where you can have this beautiful relationship with a horse um, which is really from a heart space. So this started my journey of learning to communicate with horses. <laughs> and it reminded me very much of on my journey when I started to really listen to my intuition. You know, I'd go along to these classes and these workshops and you'd be given an item and you have to like tune in and try and figure out the story and what the person's like and where the item came from. And as you're doing it, you're like, God, this is just rubbish. You know, is this really real? And then when you share the information with the group, you realize it was all correct. And you're like, whoa. And I feel that's been my journey with communicating with horses. <laughs> Um, it is incredible the capacity we have and I'm still learning and I'm still learning to trust what comes through but it's an incredible humbling experience um, and it's one that I would like to develop more and more so here I've been given this amazing incredible opportunity to really witness and be part of um, seeing how horses just have this incredible ability to um, mirror back and heal us in ways that you just can't imagine, really. Um, so yeah, so recently I had an experience of going to the barn and it had been a year or so since I'd seen them before. And Jeannie's had five horses and now she's gone up to 11. So. Um, there's a lot of horses there <laughs> and you know when you first meet horses for some it can be a bit daunting because they're huge they're so big um, and I think they're very good teachers of boundaries um, really knowing your space knowing who you are and I think they really encourage that so one of the first things Jeannie taught me was when going to the barn to visit the horses is just set an intention if you wanted to experience something or you wanted to experience healing. So quite often I would go there with an intention to be shown something or um, to help move through something. Um, and I was always given the answer. Um, and in this particular case, when I went along, I was so happy to see the horses again and obviously to meet the new members of the herd. It really brings me back home if ever I'm in too much thought um, or just in an emotion, I find it just such an amazing space to just drop back in, drop back into stillness. So on this particular day, I'm just scooping up manure in the barn and just helping clear the space and um, just being in my own world really just helping out and I've learned very much just in the field that I am and on my own journey to to really listen to things listen to my intuition listen to what comes up in me so as I'm there scooping away um, I get this feeling you know um, to go to the center of the barn and I'm like mm, okay all right and it's very interesting how even when you trust your intuition, you can have these moments where you just question it. You're like, oh really, is that really correct? 
<laughs> and if you don't follow it, you tend to be like, oh, damn it, I wish I'd done that, you know. And it always amazes me how that can still drop in. And of course, this happened in that instant, but I just knew it was my intuition. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go. So I go over to the barn and there's a fence, a, a gate there. And I see Jeannie meditating with the horses. And just at that moment, she said, is Jen here? And she called me over. And I knew that was one of the reasons I felt drawn to go there at that moment. And Jeannie said, there's a reason I've called you here. Because previously that day, we'd had a conversation in the car about how on our journey of growing, we'd lost some friends. You know, they'd just cut us off and gone another way. And for both of us, this was so, so hard <laughs> because we love our friends. And, you know, and we were talking about how we really struggle with that and how friends meant so much to us. And is there something else we could do? Or is that just part of our journey is learning to let go and love them anyway? So in that pattern or in those things happening with our friends, we both felt the wounding of our friends not being there for us, you know. Um, and so in that moment, OG was stepping up and saying, let me be there for you. Let me send you love and be there for you and receive it. So it's a really beautiful, precious moment. And she said, you know, I've called you here because this is what's being shown to me. And she said, would you, do you want to sit under her and allow to receive energy from her? I've never sat below a horse before, you know, underneath their head and have them hover over you. But I also, as well as being a little bit of like, oh, you know, I knew that I was completely safe. And I knew all I had to do was just let go, just trust and surrender in that moment. I have no idea what's going to happen. She might whack me on the head. I might get trampled over. Anything could happen. But just to trust and surrender to the moment. And that is what I did. I sat underneath her and Jeannie said, just allow her to send energy through you. And I had no idea what that would look like. Would I even feel anything? But there was a part of me that understood and knew this work. You know, I often describe that difference between the mind chatter, you know, the logical mind, which is like, what is all this and can't logically figure it out. But there's an inner knowing, there's a part of you that feels it on every level, that it's truth and that you can't deny. So as I'm sitting there, letting go, trusting, softening, going into a meditative state, I start to allow myself to receive energy from her, heart energy from her. And I get to feel what it's like to receive unconditional love. And as Odie was doing this, the leader of the pack, Montaro, who I'd had amazing connections with before and experiences, came over and um, bit her to leave. So she moved back and he stepped forward. And he stood over me as I was sitting on the ground meditating. And I went into a meditative space with him. And I realized at that moment that a lot of the horses then came round and stood in a direction directly faced at me. I knew in that moment that something, it felt something very sacred was happening, even though I didn't logically understand, but I felt it. And in that moment, I chose to just again, drop back into that trust and that surrender and not judge it, not think about it, just be. Montaro says to me, I need to, to reconnect something around your head. And so I need to whack your head. And for, <laughs> and for a moment, I'm like, 
is he really saying that to me? Oh my God, are you gonna whack my head? And he's like, I need to whack your head, is that okay? And I'm like, sure. So I'm sitting there for about 30 seconds and nothing's happened. I thought, oh, maybe I just misheard that. And then he hit my head. And I, again, I felt completely safe. Um, and I just, okay, and I just carried on sitting there. And then in my mind's eye, a lot like a visualization, came this image of all the horses standing in a circle. I began to have the knowing that I was being initiated into this herd. As this awareness dropped into my being, I said to Montaro, am I being initiated? I said, if I am, you need to move your leg, you need to stamp, you need to do something. And he stamped his leg. At the end of it, I hear very strongly from Montaro, um, you are part of us, we will never leave you. And we would very much like you to use us in your therapeutic work. So about 10 minutes later or whatever, I got up and I went and sat with Jeannie. She is very aware of what, what's going on. Um, she said, I've, I've done with meditating, now I'm gonna go off and do my thing, do some things. So I just sit there and I'm sitting there again for about 15 minutes and I'm asking Montara, I'm sending images, like is this complete now? Is everything been done? He's like, everything's done. And I'm like, okay. So I was waiting for him to leave. I was waiting for the whole gang to leave that were right in front of me. And they weren't moving. So I thought, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll just stay. And then another 10 minutes passes and I say, is it, is it done now? Yeah, it's done. And I said, okay, I'll stay here until you've gone. And Montaro looks at me and he says, I will not leave you. You need to leave us when you're ready but I'm showing you that I will not leave you. I'm not gonna leave your side. We're right here with you. He was reaching to that part of me and saying, no matter what, I'll stand by you in the same way that I wanted to do for my friends. And this was a big thing for me um, and very fitting in with the conversation I had with Jeannie that day. You know, I knew that was my pattern of, um, I love my friends, you know, I'm very, very loyal and I'll stand with you to the end, no matter what you go through, that's, that's who I am. But I've had to learn along my journey, that, that means sometimes standing by them even when they just go, and that's okay. Sometimes we grow in different directions and it's about not looking inward and going, what did I do wrong? Did I say something wrong? And make it about you, but just love them anyway. It's okay, you know? In that moment, he gave me very much something that I felt I gave my friends, but didn't always receive back. It was an incredible experience. I, to put it into words is too hard, so as I go forward from here, I feel very much the energy of the horses in me. I feel very much part of their gang. <laughs> and we are always connected to our loved ones. No matter what amount of space is between us, whether we live in separate countries or continents, we always remain connected. That's a beautiful thing. And that's not only with the horses, but with human beings too.